Okay, now we're at video number 18. Um, I was thinking this morning about all the people in Jerusalem who actually saw Jesus Christ and they witnessed the miracles. They saw him turn water into wine. They saw him walk on water. They saw him cure sick people, lame people. They saw him cure blind people, people with leprosy. They saw him immediately kill a fig tree just by saying a word. They saw him raise a man from the dead. <laughs> they saw just how awesome Jesus Christ really was. And so, yeah, they actually saw it. And for that reason, many of them did put faith in Jesus Christ. After all, how could he do those things if God wasn't really with him? Yeah. So, we didn't see him perform any miracles, though. And many of us put faith in him. But hold on. There is a miracle that Jesus Christ told us about that maybe we would see. It's in, it's in Matthew chapter 24. Let me read that for you because this is quite a miracle, right? It's Matthew 24, I'll start in verse 39. And they took no note until the flood came and swept them all away. So the presence of the Son of Man will be. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken along, and the other abandoned. Two women will be grinding at the handmill. One will be taken along and the other abandoned. Keep on the watch, therefore, because you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. How could they not notice? How can they take no note of that? How, how can two men be working together one day in the field? One gets taken along and the other one doesn't notice. H how could be two women be grinding at the hand mill, perhaps preparing a meal for their family and one gets taken and the other one doesn't notice. <laughs> that would be a miracle, wouldn't it? <laughs> Is Jesus Christ that powerful that he could do this kind of miracle? <laughs> that no one, people would actually be taken along and no one would notice that they're missing. So he did say he would cause divisions in a family. So if you were to ask a Jehovah's Witness now going to a kingdom hall to very carefully examine each and every family in their kingdom hall? Hmm. 
what would they notice? Would, would they notice that anyone was missing? But could that actually happen to hundreds of thousands of people all around the world that Jesus Christ could just take them away and no one would notice? Is he really that powerful? That would be one of the most awesome miracles if people were taken away and no one noticed. So, how awesome is Jesus Christ if he could pull that off? So, yeah, maybe it, it might have been nice living in Jerusalem when Jesus Christ came and we could actually see his miracles. But what about this miracle? What if we actually saw Jesus Christ perform this miracle? People taken and no one notices. Yeah. That would be a miracle. <laughs> if, if Jesus Christ could actually do that, you think people would put faith in him? If they saw that miracle? Wow. Yeah. Jesus Christ. He's awesome. So, in these videos, uh, I've told you some things that, you know, things about humiliation and things about judgment that might be hard, difficult to bear. And so I hope you can see that my motive is not to become a popular YouTube figure because, you know, all those other XJW YouTubers, they, they like to see their subscribers skyrocket and get all those views. And if they told you anything that might humiliate you or frighten you, I don't think they'd, they'd be so popular. So think about that. You know, if you're wondering about my own motivations, am I trying to get a huge amount of people following me? Or do I want people to see just how awesome Jesus Christ really is. So, am I obeying one of those commandments? Declaring abroad the excellencies of the one that brought me out of darkness and into his wonderful light. Can you do that? Pay it forward. Observe God's commandment. <laughs> because it truly is one of the most amazing miracles for Jesus Christ to have done. Taken people away and no one noticed. He really is awesome. So, do you see how you also could declare abroad the excellencies of the one that brought you out of darkness and into his wonderful light? And observe now, observe God's commandment, pay it forward. And then you also could shine like the brightness of the sun in his wonderful light 
in the kingdom of your father. That would be amazing. Do you think he could do that? Is Jesus Christ powerful enough to actually do that? If you observed God's commandment and simply helped everyone else understand just how awesome he really is? It's a good question, huh? So that's what Jesus Christ said would happen when he really was present. When he really would come as a thief and steal people, steal them away. He's not coming to steal TV sets and jewelry. <laughs> he said he was coming as a thief to steal people. And that that is a miracle that would happen when he was indeed present and coming. And so this is why it's very important for my audience to watch that video. Jehovah's Witnesses, take note of the man of lawlessness. And so why is it important to watch that video? Well, I'll, I'll read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, where it talks about the man of lawlessness. Listen carefully. I'll start in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. It says, However, brothers, respecting the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him, we request of you not to be quickly shaken from your reason, nor to be excited either through an inspired expression or through a verbal message or through a letter as though it's from us to the effect that the day of Jehovah is here. Let no one seduce you in any manner because it will not come until the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness gets revealed the son of destruction. So, what does it mean? What it means is not to be quickly shaken if someone tells you that Jesus Christ is present. So, who told you that Jesus Christ is present? the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses. And when did they tell you that Jesus Christ is present? 1914. So, did you get quickly shaken from your reason <laughs> that he was indeed present in 1914? And that he came as a thief then and took people away? And were you convinced through verbal expressions, perhaps public talks, conventions, assemblies, or through letters as though from the apostles, the anointed ones, through publications, Watchtower magazines and Awake magazines? Would, was your reason quickly shaken to think that Jesus Christ was present back then? But you need to watch that video because it reveals the man of lawlessness, the sons of destruction. And that 
is when Jesus Christ is present. And the day of Jehovah starts. So if you watch that video and you agree that the man of lawlessness has now been completely revealed, then Jesus Christ is present and doing taking people away. Who did he take? If the man of lawlessness really has been revealed, who did he take? Because he wasn't going to be present when all those people jumped the gun and said he was present. He would be present when the man of lawlessness actually does get revealed. So it also says here that the day of Jehovah is here. And what's supposed to happen on the day of Jehovah? Well, isn't that when the judgment starts? Let me read uh, some more from 2 Thessalonians. I'll start in verse 9. But the lawless one's presence is according to the operation of Satan with every powerful work and lying signs and portents and with every unrighteous deception for those who are perishing as a retribution because they did not accept the love of the truth that they might be saved. So that is why God lets an operation of error go to them that they may get to believing the lie. Millions now living will never die. You positively will not die. So was that the lie? But notice why he lets this happen. Listen very carefully to this part. In order that they all may be judged because they did not believe the truth but took pleasure in unrighteousness. They believed the lie. And they're carrying on with the lie. And in Revelation, it says, people carrying on a lie will not enter into God's kingdom. There'll be no weeds, no weeds in God's kingdom. So it said here, in order that they may all be judged. And so, hold on, at one time, we were carrying on with the same lie, being deceived by Satan himself and his weeds that have infested Jesus Christ's kingdom. We, I did, and so did you, if you were once a Jehovah's Witness. You were carrying on with this lie that Jehovah allowed to happen. And he allowed it to happen in order that we may all be judged. So here's a question for you. If you've been stolen and taken away from that situation, does that mean you've now been judged? Certainly then, it's my absolute conviction that if you are a person who has been disfellowshipped and taken away from that truly precarious 
place, it says they're all going to perish. If you've been taken away from that place, was a decision made in heaven regarding you? And if there was a decision made in heaven regarding you, a judgment was made. And so far, if you're being judged and taken away, so far, that judgment has been a favorable one. Because if Jesus really did come as a thief to take some people away, there's a very good reason why he did it. Someone in the heavens made a decision regarding you. So, do you understand now why Jesus Christ said in Luke chapter 6 and verse 22, Happy are you when men hate you and exclude you and reproach you and cast out your name as wicked for the Son of Man. Cast out your name as wicked name of person is no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses. You are not my people. It's got everything to do with the judgment. And so far, your judgment has been favorable. And what ha has to happen next? You have to be able to conquer Satan and see through his spectacular deception. It's according to the operation of Satan, an unrighteous deception. And so watching that video is very important for you now to conquer Satan. Already your judgment has been a favorable one. What will you do now? I hope you understand that I'm trying very hard to help you and help you with the decisions that you now make and that you do indeed declare abroad the excellencies of the one that took you out of this darkness in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and is now bringing you into his wonderful light. You are being judged. The day of Jehovah has started and has been ongoing for some time now. What will the end really be for all of us in this judgment that we are all undergoing. So even though it might be an unpleasant thing to think about, that everything we're saying, Jehovah is very carefully paying attention to. The comfort that you can get is that so far, so far, a decision has been made in heaven regarding you. And that decision so far has been in your favor. The judgment so far has been going in your favor. But it says, Jesus Christ said he's coming as a thief and that we need to wake up to this. We need to put up with Jesus Christ coming. And if we do all the right things now and conquer Satan, who will be the one standing when he really does appear? 
There are things we still need to do. And those are the things that I am struggling to help you with as we go down the rabbit hole. I want you to see just how awesome Jesus Christ really is. He is now performing the most amazing miracles. Are you going to put faith in him if he can do those things? It's truly a miracle. He is awesome. Okay, here is another reason why it's important to watch that video about the man of lawlessness. And the reason immediately follows right here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Listen carefully to what the Apostle Paul now says. And he's saying it to you. However, we are obligated to thank God always for you, brothers loved by Jehovah, because God selected you. A decision was made in the heavens regarding you. Because God selected you from the beginning for salvation. By sanctifying you with spirit and by your faith in the truth to this very destiny he called you through the good news that we declare for the purpose of acquiring the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amazing, huh? So, <laughs> the Apostle Paul is talking about you. Do you see why the, the Apostle Paul himself wished that he also could be a disfellowshipped Jehovah's Witness. Let, re let me remind you in Ro Romans chapter 9. I'll read what he said, starting in verse 3. For I could wish that I myself were separated as the cursed one from the Christ in behalf of my brothers, my relatives, according to the flesh. But is it really you who God loves? If, if you can now see the man of lawlessness and recognize that he's present and you're putting up with his coming as a thief and taking you away while no one else notices, perhaps including you, and are you waking up to that? Does he really love you? So, I'm going to read what the Apostle Paul then went on to say in verse 25. You've heard it all before, but I'm going to say it again. It is as he says also in Jose, those not my people, I will call my people. And her who was not beloved, beloved. And in the place where it was said to them, you are not my people, 
There they will be called sons of the living God. <laughs> Name of person is no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses. You are not my people. <laughs> so, is it really you that God loves? And performed the most amazing miracle? And took you out of that horrific situation where we were all being deceived by Satan through a most spectacular and unrighteous deception? You positively will not die. How humiliating is that? But if Jesus Christ made a decision in the heavens regarding you and, and took you away while no one else noticed, he really must love you. Brothers loved by Jehovah. The Apostle Paul feels obligated to thank God always for you. Brothers loved by Jehovah. We didn't deserve it. <laughs> None of us deserved it. But a decision was made in heaven to save us. Take us out of that horrific place where people are perishing and Bring us into his wonderful light. Will you declare abroad the excellencies of the one that brought you out of darkness and into his wonderful light? So now what should you do? Observe God's commandments. God loves you. So there's no way you could repay him for what he's already done for you. But one of the things you could perhaps do is observe God's commandments. And if you do that, pay all these things forward and help other people to see just how awesome Jesus Christ really is. Those other people will become your gift offering that you can have ready to present to Jesus Christ when he does appear. So what am I talking about? A gift offering that you could now present to Jesus Christ? I'm going to go back to a scripture I read in the last video. It's in the book of Malachi. Listen carefully. It's in Malachi chapter 3. And I'll start in verse 2 again. But who will be putting up with the day of his coming? And who will be the one standing when he appears? For he will be like the fire of a refiner. And like the lie of laundrymen, perhaps he's making our outer garments white with the lie of laundrymen. Imagine that. Hmm. And he must sit as a refiner and cleanser of silver and must cleanse the sons of Levi. And he must clarify them like gold. 
Remember what it said in Revelation in regards to the Lord's evening meal? By gold refined by fire. Is that what you're doing? And like silver, and they will certainly become to Jehovah people presenting a gift offering in righteousness. And the gift offering of Judah and of Jerusalem will actually be gratifying to Jehovah as in the days of long ago and as in the years of antiquity. So, if you observe his commandments and pay all these things forward and help other people see just how awesome Jesus Christ really is, Jehovah and his name will be beautified and you will indeed have a gift offering to give to the high priest, Jesus Christ, when he appears. What will that gift offering be? Your domestics. Happy is the one that Jesus Christ finds feeding his domestics when he finally does appear. They will be your gift offering to Jehovah. There really is something that we should all now be doing. I'll talk more about it as we go further down the rabbit hole. Do you see how awesome Jesus Christ really is? And how we are in fact now being judged by what we say, what we think, what we do. I'm convinced that Jehovah himself is listening very carefully to what I say in these videos. And so I'm making these videos myself with great fear and yet taking comfort that I am observing those commandments and I expect to inherit a blessing reserved in the heavens for me. Will you inherit your blessing and have a gift offering ready to present to Jesus Christ when he does appear with rejoicing? on your part.